Hi, my name is Cameron Carlos from the Anime and Location TV. I'm here at Animaticon 2021 with Brett Filkowski. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Got a fan! All right. So it's been a while since the last time you and I had a chance to talk. It was here at uh, Animaticon 2019. How have you been since then? Oh, I'm living the dream, trying to, trying to make it through the weekend. Actually, it was Metsuricon. I'm sorry. This is what happens when you haven't done an interview in 18 months. <sighs> is that how long it's been? Yeah. I'm not ready. Can we do it again? <laughs> so uh, this year, Adamaticon is working with Safe Haven Farms, a charity that helps those with learning disabilities to live a fulfilling life uh, using horse therapy. How's that been working with them? Um, so they've been phenomenal. Like, I randomly stumbled upon them. We reached out to them and, you know, said, hey, we really want to work with you guys this year. Kind of switch things up and, you know, do something different. And, I mean, the support from them has just been terrific. Awesome. Like, I used to ride horses, so I know how fun they can be. Um, now, you have a great lineup of cosplayers this year of all different levels. You know, master, intermediate, uh, the whole shebang of level of cosplay. How, how hard was that to get that set up? Um, surprisingly, it wasn't because the theme worked out. So, like, I literally, we do our theme, and then I kind of start looking for the cosplayers that kind of do things in that realm. Right. And so, like, as soon as we knew what our theme was, I was like, okay, we need this person. I, like, I'm just going to reach out and see if they'll come. And they're like, yeah, well, I know this person, and we usually just go together. And I was like, well, let's do that. And then I already knew the other one. I was like, well, that'll work. Let's. And then just, I mean, just to have that level, you know, I was like, that's phenomenal. I'm happy with it. Awesome. Now, um, of course, you have the, the wonderful Mr. Aaron Dismute coming this year. How much fun is it going to be to have him around as we, uh, the con hasn't really started yet. So how's it going to be like having him uh, join us this year? Uh, I've seen him once um, <laughs> uh, when he first came in. Uh, I'm really excited. I think, yeah. you know, because so, I mean, I know he did Alphonse when he was like yeah. 12, you know, with full metal. 11. 11. Okay. So yeah. 11. So with, you know, full metal. So I was like, okay, that's somewhere I knew him. And then now, you know, seeing him transition into yeah. my hero and everything else, I'm just like, okay, it's like the perfect draw with what we're doing. So yeah. just the fact that on short notice to it, that he yeah. was like, yeah, I'm in. I was like, cool. The well, funny part is I've actually noticed since he was 15. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, it's a little scary because, like, when I met him, it was really scary. Like, he blended in too well. I couldn't find him. Uh, so this year, Animatic Con, Animatic Con's theme is magic. How did this come about, and why did you guys choose magic as the theme for this year? I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> no. Um, th well, there, there's, there's an inside story of what we want to try to do that's mm -hmm. completely different than what any show's done, and I think it's – I think it's brilliant, and it, it'll let us revisit, revisit this year doing so. Um, but so magic, like every year we try to do something different. Right. Um, and I was like, you know, Black Clover was just taking off, was just right. getting out there. And I was like, we should really see if we can get the guests from Black Clover. And we had, before yeah. COVID hit, right. we, had, Jill we had Jill, we had Dallas, we had Micah, and we had Afia. And yeah. so, like, I mean, it was just awesome to have that, that cast. Um, and then COVID hit and was like, well, no, we're going to change your plans. Yeah. So, I mean, I even, you know, and then with Jill being in the hospital and yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, and I hope she's doing well. Um, for us, I was like, I, I don't want to go changing themes or anything else because we considered that. I was like, let's just find someone who is still in that realm. And yep. Aaron was like, as soon as I started looking through guests, I was like, Aaron, like, that's perfect. And then I was looking for an agent and the agent ended up reaching out to me. And I oh, was like, cool. I was like on Facebook of all things. I was like, oh. You have who I need. Okay, let's work that out. And I was like, within like two days, we had it done. I was like, that's like one of the fastest transactions I've had. That's actually awesome. Good job by that agent. Uh, and now in our last interview, you talked about the massive effort it takes to run a convention. Uh, can you take us through some of the, what it takes to run? I mean, I've helped run a convention. I've actually founded one myself. So we both know how hard it is to run a convention. So how, like for fans, how hard do you think it is? Like is the scale from one to ten, like one being easy and ten being hard? I don't think you can judge it that way. I really don't. I feel like because every year it changes. So when you first start in everything you're trying to prepare, it doesn't matter how much experience you have. You don't know what your attendance is. You don't know what your range is of people. So you're out there. The biggest thing you're doing is focusing on your promotion. You have to come out looking like, you, like you're established. And so for us doing it, you know, that was our first goal. And then it's like, you know, when you're at show, you worry about how things are running. So you're, you're a perfectionist all of a sudden. Yeah. Even if you weren't, you become one. Yeah. Uh, because you want, your, you, know, you want your brand to stand out. Yeah. So now, like, I feel like we're at a point after all these years that we're kind of start, it's kind of running itself in a sense. And now we're just kind of, you know, picking up the pieces when they fall and saying, okay, that goes back here. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, you have to be willing to lose sleep for a couple years <laughs> to, to, really, yeah. to really be like, okay, we can do this. Yeah. 
it, 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 he is not lying. It takes a lot to run a convention. Um, You've got to be willing to do it without, like, you know, getting upset about it. You just, it's, that, it's that trade you have to give. Right. Now, over time, you've given a lot, as we discussed, your time and efforts to conventions over the last 10 years, be it A&G, here, or other Matsuri, or other conventions. How much has it meant for you to see the feedback you've been given over the last five years that the convention's been running? Um... I my thing is like I do this because it's something I love to do. Yeah. You know, I'm a logistics person, so I love coming in and helping solve the problem. Um, so for me, like seeing the support from our fans, like at the end of the day, like you know, at any show, you know that that they want that show back. That makes every little minute that we lose sleep or whatever worth it. Yeah. Um, so, are there any upcoming projects you want fans to know about at this time? Um, Animaticon's about to start. That counts, right? Yes. yes. All right, so that's it. Animaticon, July 30th to August 1st, starts at 3 p.m. on the 30th. You should be there. All righty. Now, um, is there any final message you want to give to fans out there? Um, just keep doing what you're doing and be awesome. Thanks, Brett. It's been wonderful talking to you again, my friend. Thank you. You too. Thanks.